darkness is not dark to you, O Lord. The night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. Let us of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may arise to life immortal. For him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Father of all, we pray to you for those whom we love, but see no longer. Grant them your peace. Let light perpetual shine upon them, and in your loving wisdom and almighty power, work in them the good purpose of your perfect will. For Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the book. Proclamation of the Word from the book of Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them a light has shone. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel to the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders. We gather as the darkness threatens to overtake the light, and we wonder. Will darkness overshadow everything? Or will the light come to renew us and cheer us? We gather in the darkness of this night to name our own darkness and fear and grief and to see the beauty of the light. Perhaps you have lost someone this past year. Perhaps your family is troubled. Perhaps your home is far away and you are stuck here for the holiday season. Or perhaps you just get blue at this time of year. Now, growing up, we always made a huge deal out of Christmas. In our household, we decorated and put out plates of candy and cookies and cakes and, and had candles with those beautiful perfumes in them lit. And my mom and dad had family and friends over, and we went to church on Christmas Eve and had a refrigerator full of eggnog and a large tortilla when we got back from church at Christmas. Our Christmas was always shaped by the sadness of our mother. Christmas tears and the weariness of the soul and long days hidden away in the room. So Christmas became a time of anxiety, confusion, fear, and sadness for us. She never put it into words, but its shadow shaped everything about our Christmas. And at time over the years, I could see this sadness affect both my brothers and myself at times. It's hard to feel such depth and weight and sadness at the time of the year when the expectations are so high and the demand for joyfulness is so great. The road to the light is often littered with tears and grief whole complex of feelings that are part being alive. It's important to be honest about these feelings. This evening we have the good news of God, which comes to those in darkness, to those who are waiting with just a thread of hope to cling to, to those who have at times nearly given up. Listen to Isaiah's profound words of good news. The people who walk in darkness have seen a those who lived in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. And who was Jesus reaching out to with these words? 
Come to me all that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus is speaking to those whose burdens in life are felt as heavy and bear a hard yoke and we need relief. God is compassionate. God's mercy is offered abundantly to those in darkness, those in grief, the poor, the sick, and those who feel helpless. And on this dark night, God's light shines the brightest as we have come together. In the honesty of life's struggles, and we can still see that light. Part of the reason Christmas is on December 25th is because it coincides with the winter solstice, when darkness is at its apex and light is most needed. And this light, we say, with humble trust and quiet joy, this light is Christ, God's own self embodied in human life. The mystery of the good news is the depth and length and breadth of God's mercy and compassion for humanity and creation, for us. Here on this dark night, God is moving into our tears and our laughter, our joy and our sorrow, our fear and our courage, our life and our death. It is in the mix of the dark and the light that we come to see the meaning of our lives. So it is okay to be blue when everyone else seems to be celebrating. It's also okay to be sad in the midst of merriment. And it's also okay to be joyful, even when we grieve or feel sadness. Celebrate in hard times. Share moments of laughter, even when we know illness and grief. Tonight's gathering is wrapped in the good news of Christ. When we gather in such infinite love and mercy, we need bring nothing more than ourselves. this Advent candle to remind those persons who have been loved and lost. We pause to remember their names, their faces, and their voices. We give thanks for the memory that binds them to us this season, which anticipates Christmas. May, May God's, God's eternal love surround them. We'll sing the first verse of Silent Night.
past weeks, months, and for some of us, years of difficult times. We remember the poignancy of memories, the grief, the sadness, the hurts, the pains of reflecting on our own mortality. Let us remember that dawn defeats darkness.